Hello. Today we're going to talk about what is a mystery school. And I'm going to make a quick prayer here that my listeners hear what I need to hear, what they need to hear. And then I can speak this clearly. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. So I'm talking about what is a mystery school because the Rise Collective is a feminine mystery school. And mystery schools have been around since ancient times. They call forth people who are committed to walking a sacred path, who want to discover who they are, who are committed to knowing themselves and knowing the other world. You can think of it as a university for the soul. It's a path of self-mastery where we are working to awaken dormant DNA, unblock and uncover distortions to our essence, and really develop ourselves as, as spiritual beings. And it's a real devotion to self-development, personal development, educating ourselves about how the universe works, how the mind works, how our intuition works, how emotion works, and how all of these can inform our awareness, our spiritual connection to all that is. And perhaps most importantly, most interestingly for me, is how do we apply all of these, all of this ancient wisdom to the contemporary world? Because the the mystery schools teach these ancient traditions, right? And in the past 100 or 200 years, the way the world works has changed significantly and it continues to accelerate. This change continues to accelerate. And so how do we apply that ancient wisdom to our modern contemporary lives and society? And how do we bring these lessons and this path of self-mastery to bear in our in our contemporary lives, in our work, and on the physical plane, on the practical plane. And I've found that educating myself about myself is really empowering a certain sense of sovereignty, personal power, free will, and uh, all of those things in my life and in my work. Now, the goal of a mystery school is really self-realization and it's not self-realization just me by myself here (laughs) it is self-realization as part of the great web of life part of source we are all connected all of our relations all beings visible and invisible are connected and this self-realization this this studying in the self-mystery school is really a, a portal into mediation between the spiritual energies and the physical world and we can work with that mediation that power for mediation between the physical and the spiritual for personal and for planetary healing it's quite a powerful skill to have and cultivate and to be called forward it's also a very big responsibility In the mystery schools, we understand that we don't have power because we were chosen or because we chose this path, this sacred path. Instead, we have personal power and with that personal power responsibility because we are part of the universe, understanding the universe. And that last part of understanding the universe, that is where the personal power and the responsibility comes in. Personal power is very different from power over or force. Personal power is sovereignty. We're here to see through spirit eyes. Those of us who are studying the mysteries of life, we are here to see through spirit eyes And we are the eyes of the divine on earth. That's where their responsibility comes in. Now, a mystery school studies and teaches the mysteries of life. 
That's who we are, the mysteries of the universe, the mysteries of life, the mysteries of death, of spirit. And with those different mysteries, we're asking all kinds of questions. We're contemplating all kinds of questions like, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? What happens when we die? That's one of the great mysteries of life, isn't it? And asking the right questions is one of the biggest things that we learn in the mystery schools because a teacher or a guide in the mystery school isn't necessarily teaching in the traditional way. We're reminding you of what you already know. And in order to remind you of what you already know, we need to help you ask good questions, help you contemplate the answers to these questions because if you're not asking the right questions you're going to receive answers that you're unable to interpret properly from your guides and from the other side and so the mystery school is empowering you to ask excellent questions that lead you to find the answers within yourself We're also in the mystery school, we're teaching and learning a lot of different tools and methods that support self-mastery, sovereignty, empowerment. Some of those might be meditation, prayer, contemplation, excuse me, um, daily energy practices, clearing distortions, harnessing creativity, harnessing our will and our free our free will and our focus, honing our subtle perceptions and awareness, and then additionally, initiations and activations that help us further awaken. Now, your inner knowing might be covered. It might be covered with layers of dogma, layers of indoctrination, and those distortions that I mentioned that come from come from everywhere, (laughs) cultural programming, upbringing, etc. And those might have caused you to forget what your soul already knows and what you knew as a child when you were fresh from the other side, when you had just come in, come earth side. But it's all still there. It lives in your DNA. It lives in your bones. And that is what we are uncovering in the mystery school. Now, for millennia, what we have, what we now dismissively call woo-woo has been kept secret. It's also, for millennia, we've, we've had a certain place in society for wise ones often, in the temples or in the, um, yeah, in the temples, or they would work for royalty or they would have a place in society where they were honored or where they were um, able to share their wisdom. And there's not always a place for that these days. So it can be tricky. And now we dismissively call a lot of these skills and um, a lot of this wisdom, we call it Woo woo. It, and it has been secret for a very long time under wraps of honored initiations, commitments, and lives of service. And that's why wise ones had to go to the mystery schools to learn. And it was a mystery to those who were not initiated. And these days, we cheapen a lot of that wisdom. But You know if you have always been one who knows. This is the way of the Banfasha in my lineage. The Banfasha is the wise woman. So you'll know. In shamanic terms, the quantum field is simply the other realms. It's where anything is possible and time and space do not exist. To access those other realms, 
In the shamanic tradition, we call it becoming the hollow bone, leaving the material world and our attachment to our identity behind. We leave it at the door. But in this earthly realm, I've been tracking, especially in the past five or 10 years, a real obsession with defining and redefining our identities. I am this and they are that. and Defending the identities, right? And the part that blocks the quantum connection is the attachment to those self-definitions and labels and identities. Most people don't realize that they're prisoners by psychological manipulation of consciousness, manipulation of frequency, and mind control, right? And we have to be aware that that is present in order to clear those distortions and those indoctrinations. We are surrounded by mind control in our contemporary lives. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you don't care to live a quantum life, a mystical life. And a mystical life consists of direct experience with reality beyond ordinary perception. Now, when our reality is being defined and controlled by something outside of ourselves, not our soul, like this mind control, this psychological manipulation and um, frequency control. When our reality is defined by those things, we're not aware of those things. Our perception, our intuition, and the way that we see the world can be very, very limited. It It can't be quantum. But in contrast, when we operate from sovereignty, we are not controllable. And we are quantum. Now, if if it can be alluring to attach to an identity, and that's all well and good, that's ordinary. If you want to be extraordinary, if you want to be beyond mystical, beyond ordinary perception, otherworldly, you might say, You need to become that hollow bone, leave your biases and your conditioning behind and be guided by the divine, be guided by your soul instead of what is outside of you, okay? And of course, of course humans with egos, which is every human, has parts of us that want to attach to identities and labels, but being aware of that, being aware of that part, that ego, And having choice around it is really the trick. Now, I wasn't expecting the internet to become such a contentious and dangerous place so quickly. And in addition to that obsession with identity, I am tracking this totalitarian mindset that really attacks anyone who has a different perspective. And people are critiquing how others should be rather than being willing to see how everyone and everything is a mirror as a true wise woman does and people aren't just critiquing they are canceling they are destroying people's lives and in the past couple of years i really started to understand something more acutely i used to think oh we now live in a world where it doesn't need to be a mystery anymore But now what I understand more acutely is now that I track this totalitarian mindset is that the mystery schools were a mystery for good reason. That's how it's been for millennia. Tradition is tradition. Now we know why. Because the danger is still there. It might not be a life and death death situation right now. But people are still being persecuted The form of persecution is very different. It can be digital. It can be a burning down, a destruction of someone's life and reputation through the cancel culture. And that is a form of persecution. So this is being done by people who 
identify with the myth of separation. Identify with all of those things that divide us, all of the identities, the labels, the distortions. And it's even to the point where it's separating families and friends and neighbors and communities from each other. This is in direct conflict with what the mystery schools and what the shamanic perspective is all about, right? We were talking about the great web of life. We are all relations. And that means we focus on how we're similar, what we have in common. We bring our differences with love and regard, positive regard for one another. Compassion. And I want you to know that this mystery school, this feminine mystery school, stands for love, sovereignty, and choice. Now, if you are a wise woman and you're resonating with what I'm saying here, if you're a person who asks insightful questions and you're really devoted to developing yourself as a spiritual being and applying all of that wisdom to every area of your life, applying that magic to every area of your life and your work, this mystery school is going to be for you. And you're going to know if it's for you. You're going to feel the pull. So come and get on the wait list at therisecollective.org. You'll see the link for the wait list and you'll be notified next time we open. And I hope you'll join us. Thank you for joining me here today. I'll talk to you soon.